Good afternoon everyone, today's topic is heavy metal intoxication and halitus. So most of the metals are very important for the life and they play a huge role in the um, biologic um, reactions and uh, the, some of the metals can be very are toxic and poisonous and usually the one of the oldest diseases of the heavy metal intoxication is connected with the metal mining and also uh, refining um, and a good thing is that the Modern uh, toxicology is very good in recognizing the hazards of the heavy metals and uh, most of the protective measures were taken to prevent the diseases. However, uh, still there are some incidents of the intoxication and um, the rate of intoxication is very high. The heavy metals will uh, interfere with the uh, calcium uh, and other cations and inhibit the enzymes. They can also generate oxidative stress and affect the genes as well. Um, so the treatment usually uh, directed to the binding of the heavy metal with the halitus and to excrete them from the body. We will start with the uh, lead intoxication and. Uh, Lead intoxication is one of the most commonly seen uh, diseases in the world and because the lead has a very uh, widespread commercial use that includes the uh, batteries uh, and metal alloys a uh, soldier uh, in the electronics uh, they add the lead to the glass to increase its hardness then also to the plastics and to the dyes especially the old dyes in old uh, houses and also ceramics uh, because of the elite may be one of the alloys in the plumbing uh, the corrosion that uh, may be prone for the uh, uh, pipelines in the old buildings can lead to the uh, uh, intoxication through drinking water, tap water and uh, also the lead can enter the body through the air through the en environmental intoxication uh, and also uh, through the food and water uh, however uh, the, uh, the environmental exposure uh, is less nowadays because uh, there was a removal of the lead ethylene uh, ethylene lead uh, from the gasoline and that uh, also uh, the removal of the lead from the paint uh, 
but however there is still uh, old paint that can be left from the previous century and those professionals who repair the buildings or work in the art galleries can be still exposed to the lead containing paint um, so the um, lead is slowly uh, absorbed uh, by the GI and respiratory and we can find the specific lead uh, uh, at the x-ray uh, like dense metaphysical lines like here in the bones and this is a chronic lead poisoning um, and the uh, absorption primary way of absorption is GI and uh, bioavailability is about 10% uh, and 50% in children uh, and the low calcium iron deficiency can lead to the increased lead absorption uh, then the lead uh, is uh, bind to the erythrocytes and are distributed in bone, uh, brain, and kidney and other uh, tissues and it can cross placenta uh, that is why it's poisonous for the fetus uh, and the uh, Toxic effects of the lead uh, include the inhibition of the enzymes uh, and replacement of the calcium, iron, and zinc, and also oxidative stress, gene expression, and the uh, And and the treatment uh, of the lead poisoning include the termination of exposure and supportive care and then inhalation therapy and uh, the the primary care is the cerebral edema can be treated with the uh, corticosteroids and the uh, diuretics and anticonvulsants may be required if there are some seizures uh, uh, The overhydration should be avoided. Uh, the or the halation therapy, uh, EDTA, calcium, sodium, EDTA is used uh, intravenously, and also uh, uh, the intramuscular dimercaprol can be used. Uh, after the chelation therapy during five days oral treatment with the system can be uh, started uh, and also uh, sometimes initiation with the system can be used as well um, So the next, uh, so the here are the symptoms of the lead poisoning. 
and that includes almost every organ and system or even the skin if it's uh, talk about the organic lead poisoning um, and um, uh, the chronic intoxication can last up to several years. So the next uh, uh, is so this is the uh, common sources of the lead in the house that is uh, industrial emission of the lead from air lead in the food, in the tap water from the, uh, from the lead pipes and soldier in the lead, in the pipes dust of the lead on pets and uh, lead in the paint that can crack and destroy and dust on the toys. Children are specifically susceptible to the lead intoxication because of the high bioavailability up to 50% in children. So the next intoxication is arsenic. Um, arsenic is a naturally occurring in the earth and is used for commercial um, and industrial uh, products uh, and even in pharmaceuticals um, so like the arsenic Uh, specifically in stomatology, just for the treatment of the nerve to kill the nerve of the tooth. Uh, and it's also used in manufacturing of the chips uh, in electronics, wood preservatives. Uh, in the marine construction, uh, then in uh, veterinary pharmaceuticals as well. Uh, and sometimes the lead can be found in the uh, water that. Uh, so the arsenic can leak from the mineral deposits. For example, in India and Bangladesh, uh, the, there are mm, a lot of health problems because of the high concentration of arsenic in the water. Then there is also arsine. Uh, arsine is a hydrate of the arsenic that is a hemolytic gas uh, that is produced mostly in the semiconductor industry in the electronic uh, chips manufacturing uh, and uh, also, the uh, the solution of the arsenic uh, was widely used uh, in the 18th century uh, for the treatment of the uh, uh, for treatment of the syphilis and uh, some of the arsenic organic arsenics have been used as uh, antimicrobials 
Uh, and uh, fortunately, they are replaced by the uh, antibiotics uh, in the previous century, in the 1925. Uh, and uh, also, arsenic chemicals have been used in the uh, warfare and the most commonly used is levisid uh, that is the fluoro fluorovinyl RC uh, is a chemical warfare agent and uh, Uh, the treatment uh, uh, and some of the drugs that, for example, Millersoprol is used for the treatment of the African Typonosomosis and some of the drugs also used for the treatment of the cancer. Um, for example, arsenic trioxide. So all these rocks can lead to the intoxication as well. Um, and um, uh, gas poisoning is uh, has a characteristic intoxication. It has a hemolytic effect. Uh, so the hemo hemolysis occurs uh, and uh, then uh, renal failure uh, develops later. Uh, Chelating agents uh, are not effective in case of the uh, arsenic poison with the gas poison. So the next uh, method is mercury. Mercury is the liquid in the room temperature and uh, has a very uh, common application. Uh, most of the commonly intoxication is during mining of the mercury and uh, the, that lead to the both def defects and also mercury is can be accumulated in fish and fish poisoning uh, leads to the bioaccumulation and intoxication with the uh, mercury. Um, so the primary agent of intoxication is methyl mercury in the seafood and uh, elemental mercury also can be uh, found in some uh, thermometers uh, and uh, ultraviolet lamps. Uh, so uh, the mercury is used in the electrolytic production of fluorine and calcium soda and also in the uh, some electrical equipment uh, like switches, thermometers, uh, and fluorescent lamps. Uh, in previous century, uh, mercury was also used for the dental amalgam for the treatment of the tooth patches, but that practice stopped like. 
30 years ago. Uh, uh, mercury uh, pharmaceuticals and biocides also decreased in recent years, uh, but still some Traditional medicines can use antiseptics with the mercury. Uh, uh, still, though, the uh, environmental intoxication can lead to the mercury uh, from the fossil fuels burning and bioaccumulation of the methyl mercury in seafood uh, and sometimes uh, uh, dental amalgams in developing countries still used. So uh, The main uh, uh, antidotes for the treatment of the mercury uh, is uh, 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 is the uh, halators, and uh, the most commonly used is the uh, ethylene diamine uh, uh, tetraacetate. Uh, so in there is a uh, also calcium disodium salt. Uh, so this is the sodium uh, calcium disodium of ethylene. Uh, so this is ethylene D amine here one two nitrogen. Uh, et, uh, I mean tetraacetate and there are four acetate residues so if one of two of them are with the sodium salt then it is uh, it is a solution of calcium disodium uh, in solutions of calcium disodium acetate, uh, the calcium is bound to the covalently to the nitrogen, uh, and also by the ionic bonds. So, uh, and when in contact with the lead or other uh, toxic metal lead is incorporated in the five tetracyclic rings. So that makes a strong complex. So the next one is dimercaprol or dimercaptoropanol. Or oh, so this is a pain and uh, is a uh, alcohol with a three molecular alcohol looks like glycerin but two hydrogens are replaced by the sulfhydrogen groups uh, Uh, the succimer or DEMS SA is very good for the dissolution of uh, those uh, compounds that are not soluble in water. And penicillamine is also commonly used in drug intoxication and ferox ferroxamine 
mostly used for the iron intoxication. The succimer uh, or GMCA uh, uh, and also uh, ethylene. Uh, yeah, I mean to draw acetic acid, unicleo, glycerine, and diphroxamine. Uh, so, and a xerox is a drug for the treatment of the iron overload. And Prussian blue is a, uh, one of the oldest drugs. Uh, that is a ferric hexacyanoferrate is for the treatment of the cesium and thallium intoxication. So that's all for today. Thank you for your attention and see you next week.